Community is everything. We're proud to support ours. Through partnerships with fellow community leaders and organizations, we're helping our neighbors access essential resources and services so we can all thrive. Learn more at bofa.com forward slash community. Good morning, everyone. Awesome to see you all. You look fantastic. Awesome time to be in Michigan. Go blue. Sunday night, we have another big game. Go Lions. It is indeed a terrific time to be in Michigan, in the Detroit region, and I welcome you all to the Detroit Policy Conference sponsored by the Detroit Regional Chamber. This is our 11th annual conference and our 11th year partnering with Motor City Casino for this fabulous venue. Can you think of a better place, better acoustics, better venue than right here to hold this annual event? I think not. I think we've got a really, really terrific place. You know, the, many of you know the history of this conference. Like over, we're over a decade old now, and we started this because we realized that there was a gap. We certainly have our signature event up at Mackinac Island, but we know, you know, it's inconvenient, it, you know, it's three days long, it's expensive. So what we wanted to do, and I'm so glad that you've helped us succeed in this goal of creating the type of programming, the type of quality, the type of thought leadership that we bring to the Mackinac Policy Conference and put it right here in the city of Detroit and make it accessible and affordable for anyone to attend. And thank you for being a part of that for the last decade. I also, I also want to thank our uh, speakers that are going to be sharing this stage uh, today. While we have tremendous thought leaders and leaders of all stripes that are going to be in these chairs and standing on this stage, I just want to recognize a handful as we get started this morning. First of all, I am delighted that the three key county executives from the Metro Detroit area are here today. Executives Coulter, Evans, and Hackle. The great mayor, Mike Duggan, is here. And our brand new, freshly minted, new president of Wayne State University, President Kimberly Espy, will be here today, along with many, many others. So you have a terrific program in store for you. And none of us would be here, including myself, certainly, without our amazing sponsors. Again, a big thank you to Motor City Casino Hotel and a new sponsor, and we're delighted that at the diamond level, Republic Services has joined us this year. A round of applause for our key sponsors. Our platinum sponsors this year are the Kresge Foundation and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. And our gold sponsors, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, our long-term partner in so many things, Detroit Metro Airport, the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy, the Detroit Zoo, Meta, Rocket Companies, Tryon Solutions, another new partner that we're excited to work with, the University of Michigan, and Visit Detroit, plus 31 additional sponsors. And that list of sponsors, the companies and entities that want to be engaged with this event and have access to you, those of you who come to this every year, keeps growing every year. Now, the theme of this year's conference is growing our population. And we've cribbed this theme from Governor Whitmer's Growing Michigan Together Council and the report that was issued at the end of the year. And this council was a bold challenge to tackle why Michigan lags its peers and what can be done to reverse it in terms of population growth. To that end, today we feature many members that participated in the governor's council. And we are particularly proud today to have with us as our conference chairs and as thought leaders, John Ricolta Jr., the one of the council chairs, 
the chairman of Walbridge and the former ambassador to the United Arab Emirates, Shirley Stancato, a council chair, a Wayne State University governor, and the former president of New Detroit. Please welcome our conference chairs. I was really proud to be part of the Governor's Council and the final report that was created. One of the reasons why I was proud of our ultimate work product was that the Council didn't pull its punches. One of the first things that, uh, that is in the report is that um, we, if we want to be the state that we know we can be, First, we have to recognize our greatest asset are our people, and we are losing our people. We all know what a healthy economic and societal growth cycle looks like. Michigan doesn't have one. In this particular chart, Michigan is on the right side of this chart, which is, as we know, the wrong side. Declining birth rates, and negative net migration leading, leads to fewer people paying taxes, fewer skilled workers for our employers, and this results, as we all know, in declining revenue for investment and so on. If we don't fix this cycle, we don't fix Michigan. And that's why the council created a three-element virtuous cycle of growth that if implemented with fidelity and success, has the potential to reverse this negative cycle we find ourselves in today. Now, while we don't have time to dive into these three elements, I'm just going to introduce the three elements very briefly. One is to make Michigan the innovation hub of the Midwest. Develop our economic plans that establishes Michigan as not just an innovation hub, but America's scale-up state. We are fabulous at our large, com uh, at a, at large companies, Fortune 500 companies. But those Fortune 500 companies 100 years ago were the entrepreneurs of their day. And we need to repeat that cycle. And we have a metric for this in the Governor's Council. Move from 34th, where we are today, which is not nearly good enough, to be in the top 10. We need a culture of lifelong learning. That's second. Establish a Michigan education guarantee. That means that if you, when you graduate from any high school in the state of Michigan, it means something. It means that you are truly ready for that next step, that there are high accountability standards. And we need to think about not just K through 12, but K through 14 and beyond, because in today's rapidly evolving technological uh, environment, we can't just say, oh, I've done my 12 years, my 14 years, my 16 years of formal education, and I'm done now. It's not going to work that way anymore. And the metric here, again, we're lower mid-pack, 33rd. Let's be in the top 10. And then, of course, third, we need resilient and attractive communities that attract and keep young talent. And here, we want to move our net migration status from 20 to, again, be in the top 10. And I encourage you all to take a look at the report. Now, our thought leaders that are lined up today will be geared to advancing the ideas in the report and their own ideas about how to address the challenge that's on this slide, that Michigan is shrinking. As the United States grew 46% since 1980, Michigan grew a mere 9%. Now, demographers will tell you that no matter what, Michigan is on a trajectory to lose population compared to our national peers, at least in the short to medium run. But we can bend this curve. If we take action, if we take the right action, if we're unified, we can bend the curve. And more importantly, we can create a more prosperous economy and state for those who are here and those who choose to come here. But in addition to shrinking, we are getting poorer. 
And part of my job this morning is to set the stage to make the case that Michigan's house is on fire. So in 1970, Michiganders made 117% of the median US household income. In other words, in 1970, our average Michigan household was wealthier than their national averages. Fast forward to today, we're below the national average. In 2020, it was 91% of the national average. And by the way, by 2022, that number had dropped even further to the high 80% range. And we're getting older. In 1980, for those of us that wasn't that long ago, 60% of our population was 34 or younger. And only 10% of our population were over the age of 65. Fast forward to 2020, 44% of our population is 34 or younger, and 17% are 65 or older. Folks, these are big swings in demographics in a relatively short period of time. And as someone who is getting much closer to that big 6-0 than I would like to admit, I hesitate to say this, but this is true, younger is better for a whole bunch of different reasons, especially when it comes to demographics. We're also becoming less competitive. You name the metric income growth, labor force participation, employment growth. Michigan lags not only our peer states, but we lag the US averages. Now, a lot of people want to talk about taxes. Certainly as a pro-business, pro-growth organization and individual, taxes are always a big deal. But I think we need to take a real serious and honest look at where we are in taxes. We need to understand it's not just the level of taxation that matters, but we need to make sure that our taxation system is built for the 21st century economy. Because frankly, our taxation system was built for the last economy. And while Michigan has a reputation for being a high tax state, today, that's changing. Over the years, we've actually kind of lowered our taxes compared to many of our national competitors. So, what is job one? I think we all know this. Great jobs for young talent. Attracting them and keeping them is going to be a critical element of success in the 21st century. And it's not just jobs, but it is great careers in growing industries with good employers in great places. The good news is that according to statewide polling, conducted by the Detroit Regional Chamber and Business Leaders for Michigan, shows that 80% of young Michiganders see equal or better job opportunities right here in Michigan. This is a great place to start in our quest to keep this great talent here in Michigan. But we're not producing enough of this great talent that our private sector needs to be successful in the 21st century. By 2027, 70% of all jobs will require some level of post-secondary education, a college degree, an associate's degree, or a skilled credential. Today, we're only at 55%. And that's not only short of where we need to be, it's also short of where most of our competitors are, both domestically and nationally. And too many of our educated young residents are leaving. Now, while 80% feel that there are equal or better job opportunities right here in their backyard, one quarter of them are looking elsewhere and plan to leave in the next decade. And to make matters worse, we lose way too many of our young talent, obviously to places like Austin and Seattle, New York, Chicago, dot, 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 an unfair share of that outward migration talent are our most educated young people, those in the STEM fields and those with master's and doctorate degrees. So these are some ugly numbers. 
I know it's too early to start drinking, <laughs> but I hope what I've been able to do is, one, set the stage for the conversations that are about to come, understand, have a shared understanding of the facts and the gravity of the situation we face, not just in the Detroit region, but across our great state. The people who will follow me on stage share my zeal for doing something about this, and I'm anxious for you to hear from them. To end this house is on fire data dump, let me end with two notes. One, this is a crisis, our prosperity and our population crisis, that has been in the making for the long term. We count it in decades. There is no person, persons, political party, or sector that we can blame. If we have been part, if anyone has been in part of Michigan for the last 50 years, we all play a role in this. And we all have our own level of responsibility. Two. Because this is a long-term crisis, we can't think that we're going to see success overnight, regardless how successful we are implementing either the governor's council report or path, other pathways forward to grow both our prosperity and our population. This is going to take time. And if it's going to take decades, I strongly suggest we start now. Thanks so much. So glad you're with us. Have a great day. Community is everything. We're proud to support ours. Through partnerships with fellow community leaders and organizations, we're helping our neighbors access essential resources and services so we can all thrive. Learn more at bofa.com forward slash community.